All right, guys, I got three challenge locks here from Trenley. He's a student of uh, the Milwaukee School of Engineering. So I think we might have something to worry about. He said he made all the pins in these by hand, and he's got them kind of coded here. These are all on the um, uh, quick set keyway. We have what he calls the single diamond, which he says is the easiest one and gives really good feedback. Number two is uh, a little harder, got double diamond there. And then the triple diamond uh, it has all the alien tech. In fact, he says on this one, when gutting the triple diamond, use a shim in order to not to have to go in from the top. Be very careful when gutting because some things inside are not as friendly as they might seem. And he's kind of cut the keys in a unique way too. So we have the single diamond, the double, and the triple. I think that's the one I like alien tech. I like weirdness. I think I'll go with this guy. So let me get him clamped up and see if we can get this triple diamond picked open. All right, guys, we got this unfriendly trendly. I'm going to use top of the keyway 50 thousandths because that works really good on quick set keyways. Got a lot of flop in there, and that's what we'd expect. I'll probably pick this thing counterclockwise. Makes it a little easier for me to tension it. Whoops. If I can hold on to the tension wrench, and I will put a mark on here. So if we get a fault set, hopefully we'll be able to see it. All right, wide open keyway, say quick set. So we can use a nice fat pick. Let's try this guy. It is a 23,000 DeForest Diamond from the Praxis kit. Wide keyway, nice thick material so I can get some good leverage on this thing and probably get pretty good feedback. I'm counting five, but I've noticed I'm really getting snagged up right here. It looks like pin one or pin two, just really grabs a hold of that. Everybody else just kind of slides until he hits that speed bump right in the front. All right, let me zoom in. Oops. Now, see what we can do here. All the way in, light tension, find a binder. And it's that nasty one right in the front. A little click. Pin five. That was pin one. I think the pin one just fell down on it again. That was pin two again. That was pin one. He'd fallen back down. Got him out of sequence. There's pin two. I got him out of sequence again. He went right back up. Trying to get under pin three there. that binder there we go pin two little very slight turn on that core I'll take it Something fell. Pin two again. Pin one again. That's really weird. Whoop. Tension or fall out. I think I pried him out when I was picking pin one. All right, I'm going to apply a little more tension on this because it seems like everything, no sooner do I get it picked and it falls right back down. There we go. That's a little more 
Got a little more oomph to it. Okay, that was four. Something fell. That was two again. Okay, that was five. Got a little very slight turn. All right, there's two. Now one is binding. I'm gonna leave one alone for now. Check everybody else. All right, back to one. All right, now, ah, oh, I know why. We got a good fault set. I put really heavy attention on that after I picked one and it's turned. I believe this core is slightly pinched inside of here to rob me of feedback. It's a technique. There, now we, we're back. A little, little more fault set. A little more fault set. A little more fault set, if that's even possible. Hmm. I'm not getting any feedback. There we go. Pin. Three. Gosh, deeper fault set. <laughs> I see what you mean now, Trendly, about not friendly as it appears. There we go. Wow, it's really tight in there. Really tight. All right, let's see if we can get this thing gutted without breaking anything. I am going to gut with a shim. What do you say? I don't know how I know that. Um, let's go ahead, let's check the key, lock it back up, and it is the triple. Uh, oops, trying to keep this in camera. I have never seen bidding like that before. <laughs> Talk about extremes. All right, let's see if it works. He swore it worked. Oh, wow. Get in there. There we go. All right. Uh huh. Well, it works to a fault set. Come out of there. All right, let's try some magic. See if I can find my magic lube here. A little bit of Houdini. I'm trying to pull it out just a hair and go back and forth trying to find that shear line. It's very close. But no cigar. It's not working. Okay, let's let's uh, gut it from the top. Maybe we can figure out what's going on. Let me get a rag. Wipe some of this Houdini up. I am not going to be able to use a shim on this one, but I am going to be able to use a sharp instrument. Oh yeah, that was easy. And let's just go in from the top. All right, let's pull these guys out. So number five. 
these springs are a little different. Only, well, number three is anyway. Number two is a little longer than normal. Number one is a little shorter than normal. I don't see any threads inside of the body there. All right, let's try it this way. All right, so it looks like homemade. Pretty rustic looking. Not a key pin. And a it looks like a commercial spool. All right, number two. T pin. He's also reduced diameter. And looks like the key pin just doesn't want to come out of there. Let me get my beater block so I don't ruin my, There we go. There. All right, he is a homemade spool, and here is the acting key pin. All right, number three. All right, I don't know which is which, guys. But that's what we're looking at. I don't know which one was where. I'm guessing that's how he went in there, but that's 100% guess. Um, number four. I don't like guessing. It bothers me. I lose sleep at night when I got to guess. All right. So there's our homemade tea pin, and he is pretty rough looking. And we have another non key pin but he's got a spool cut into him and the last one all right looks like a dog bone and there's got to be another one he's got he's got some weird cuts on him I want I don't want to say cuts let's just call those grind marks So this is very oddly shaped. Maybe made that with the hand files, my guess. Got some sharp edges. Not quite round. Not quite square. There's what we're looking at. He was in there just like that. All right, the only one I'm not sure of is number three. Um, let's pull the core off. So we can take a look at what else we got in here. See if we got any other weirdness. I'm seeing, looks like threads in one. They're not very deep threads, if they are threads at all. In one, looks like number three's got some grinding on the edge, and number five also, a couple of threads in the top but not very deep threads. So let's, I'm going to call it one, three, and five have some kind of modification, semi-threads, I don't know. And in this guy, I didn't see, yes I did, I do see some threads in number five, and the rest of them are all stock. I think the difficulty in this lock has to do with the roughness of the pins. Let's take a close look and see what I'm talking about here. they are kind of rough it does look like they were maybe done with a hand file I mean nothing against that it obviously works and makes it difficult to pick but it also makes it unpredictable uh, so as you pick it it might give you a certain feel but if you spin that pin around to another one of those irregular surfaces like particularly on that guy right there with all the squared off edges uh, it'll pick differently and give you a different feedback different feel so there are advantages to having rustic machining, and I guess this one took full advantage of it. Anyway, Trendly, there's your triple diamond. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal.